Hey, Caleb. How's it going? Will, what's up, man? Haven't heard from you in a bit. Yeah, it's been a while. We're, we're staying busy down here, man. That's cool. That's cool. How's the, uh, the weather? I mean, you, you might actually be cooler than we've been up north here. Yeah, I think right now, let's see, it's 81 degrees and rainy. What, what's it in Michigan? Well, today is a cold day, but and yesterday was, but it, we had been on a bender of like 90 degrees almost every day. So yeah, I think we had you, but now now we're a little bit below you. It was like 74. Oh, that's nice. That, oh, that's a good, so nice. Good Michigan summer. Yeah, it feels so good to finally get a little bit of a reprieve there. Yeah. All right. Well, I've prepared for you three instances of birding in uh, TV shows that are a little bit famous in the birding community. I don't know if you if you've ever seen them, but are you ever watching TV and you either hear a bird that's in the background and you're like, it just ruins it. It breaks the fourth wall because you're like, okay. I know that this bird can't be here, or if it is, then it's just not. It's just not there, you know? Absolutely. I, I literally can't shut it off because, I mean, I'm birding even when I'm talking to people. I can never shut it off. Um, so so if I watch a TV show and I hear a bird that I know cannot be there, it drives me. It, I'm just like, okay, this is completely unrealistic, um, Yeah. which I know is kind of borderline psycho, but <laughs> I just can't shut it off. Yeah, you, you can't be a birder like us, us without being a little bit obsessive compulsive about these things, right? Indeed. All right, I, well, I have to admit, there was one show, though, I cannot remember what it is off the top of my head, but there was one show that had a bunch of inaccuracies. I, actually, I think it was just uh, the big year. Yeah. The things yeah. That, were, that were wrong in the big year, I totally let them go, and I enjoyed the movie like a normal person for once. That's a whole nother that's a whole nother thing is we've got to pull up clothes from the big year and go through it because you're right. It's like the birding community got got a, a bone thrown to them. But so it felt good because it's like, OK, b- real birding and pop culture. That feels good. Um, but, yeah, there were a few parts where it's just like, I, I don't know. <laughs> but, you know, I thought that it didn't take away from the story arc, though, um, because the the overall picture of it was still just so good for burning and and it got so many people interested in in the hobby. Yes. So, but anyway, okay. let's see how it relates to today and I will tell you off the top here, I am not a pop culture guy. I don't even have a TV. So a lot of these pop references I'm literally going to not know what we're talking about. But I think that's okay, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right. Yeah. Let's All do right, it. Let's get into it. Okay. <laughs> Corn crakes in the U.S., huh? Dang. In, in Brooklyn. Let's see this here. All right. Ready? Let's do it. Kevin rolling down the hill, and then, of course, the second swarm of bees. But we're good now, right? Can you guys hear me? You keep moving away from me for some reason. <sighs> I wish a bee would sting me in both ears right now so they'd still shut as well. What was that? I, I couldn't hear you. I'll just assume you said keep going. Anyways, yeah, I just... I figured if I could get you guys together, I could create a magical moment. But of course, we now know that magic doesn't exist. It's a corn what? crake. Oh, I can't believe it. I finally spot a corn crake and my eyes are swollen shut. It's okay, Kevin. I'll describe it to you. Okay, have you ever seen a duck? Peralta, I got this. The beak color is Pantone 4685C. The wing is Pantone 2322C, spotted with 4515C. Oh. The tail is Pantone 7525C with bands of 419C. Oh, my. Oh, Kevin, the throat, Pantone 7528C. Oh, Raymond, those are some hot Pantones. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something. There are birders in the writing staff of whatever this show is. That is hilarious. Yeah. Maybe birders from... Europe or <laughs> somewhere where corn crake is a, is a bird that people know about, right? You wonder, don't you? Because if they're American birders, why would you pick something that's that rare? And for the record, it does occur on the East Coast, but it is like, you know, mega, mega rare. We're talking like once every multiple decades or something like that. Right. So yeah. Odd choice. But, but importantly, that actually was a corn crake. The video looked, oh, yeah. it looked like a corn crake. And... It, that's Andy Samberg, right? The SNL guy, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's so funny. So, yeah. 
how does how does that work into the plot? Like, is birding a part of the the normal plot line in the show? Or so I think the two guys in front were a couple that were both birders, and they were fighting or something. So Andy Samberg was trying to get them back together by you know I don't know taking them birding or something, but it it didn't go well until they found a corn crake and. I assume like Central Park or something because it, it takes the whole thing takes place in New York City. It sure looked like uh, Central Park. And also, what is a pentone or a pantone? What, what what was that? My guess is it's like the 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 technical name for the paint colors. Like when you when you're looking at paint samples when you go to uh, the hardware store or something. Okay, so that so the guys might have been artists or something like that, and that was the I, only I way know. they were going to communicate to them what what it looked like. Well, I, that, and that's where it kind of lost me is because that's not how birders would ever no. descri- describe what a bird looks like, which is like, I don't know. I don't want to nitpick it or anything, but an no. honest birder's reaction, it's a little bit out there because you'd never actually, you'd say colors like rufous or ochre, or those are the kind of colors that we, uh, that, that's kind of like the lingo that we use when we're describing colors on birds, you know? I, I actually, I completely agree with you, but I thought the comedic value of it totally outweighed the lack of you know, you know, technical accuracy uh, as to how a birder would would process. I mean, first of all, if there was really a corn crake, you would be jumping up and down and screaming and going crazy and reporting it everywhere because it'd well, be like in the weird. inside. You, you wouldn't want to do that if you were actually right in front of a you, corn crake. You might true, scare it off. <laughs> but good luck controlling yourself if if you actually found that. I mean, that's like winning a power right. ball. That was right. great, man. That was super funny. All right, th- this next one's a little bit shorter, but and and. Uh, Just as ridiculous. All right, let's see here. All right, here we go. Raymond, are you there? Yeah. uh, Sorry, Frank. I I thought I saw an ink that uh, must have blown the wrong direction for winter. (laughs) It sounds windy. Where are you? Top of my building. Got a bird feeder up here. Okay, that's pretty much it. Uh, So it's in St. Louis, Missouri, and... They're talking about Inca Dove. Inca- you know, it's not the it's not the worst place in North America to find it to find an Inca Dove. It could happen, and it probably I'll bet you it's happened in that state or nearby. And actually, I will say it could occur in an urban environment like this. That's not implausible. Now, I don't know how he's seen it from the top of a skyscraper. Um, how how in the world do the writers come up with this stuff? Like, how do they how do they choose one and you know what I mean? Like if they just picked morning dove or something, which is the really common one there, not, would the audience notice that that's not something he would be excited about there? Like, like well, they had the they had the foresight or the knowledge to say it, it looks like it flew the wrong way for the winter. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah, yeah. They know that it's out of range, but again, if you were really birding and you thought you saw an inca dove and you had the knowledge to know that it's a vagrant in that area, you're not going to be like, oh, sorry, Frank, I. Thought I saw an Inca dove. It's, no, holy bleepity bleep! I just found a <laughs> yeah. found an Inca dove. <laughs> this show has completely lost its accuracy and plausibility. Yeah. So just for kicks and giggles here, I pulled up the Inca dove map, and as I predicted, it is a vagrant. But they've got many records of it now. Mm-hmm. And look at this—they got one near St. Louis. Man, there you go. So it's not that far off. That's funny. <laughs> Good stuff. All right. Man. Yeah, I've got uh, one one more for us here. How'd you come up with these, by the way? Were you actually watching the shows when, when this happened? Um, I was with the House of Cards one, uh, but with the other two, I actually put out a, a question on um, Red Polling, the, the Birders Polling Group on Facebook. Oh, yeah. And and these these were the best ones that I, that I got. That's funny. Yeah. You know, I got to tell you, Will, they're – over the years of watching shows or movies and such, there are bird references galore. And I, I don't, I wouldn't even have I'd know where to start to find them. Like I wouldn't even remember what they were. So that'd make another, we, that might be totally fun, un- like a, a video for, for uh, engagement of our, of our listeners, you know, at some yeah. point. All right, let's do this one more. Let's do it. This is my favorite one, by the way. Which is nice. Anticipation is killing me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I thought that one was, I mean, I, yeah, you said so close. So close with the, the red-bellied, he's, she said red-bellied sapsucker. 
Yeah, and it's, it's Red, 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 Red Blade Woodpecker. Woodpecker. That actually was the vocalization for Red Blade Woodpecker. Um, here, first question: Is this being filmed in Euro Eurasia? Because we don't really generally call ourselves Twitchers in North America. That that is a British thing, like a European thing. I think it's set. I think it's set in America. See, if I've heard people do it, but you have that Americans who talk like that are generally usurping the language from like a birding friend from the UK or something. I, I we all say listers over here instead of twitchers. You know what I mean? Or chase or chasers. Yeah, chasers would work too. Um, yeah. So that was my first question. So that that place is the bird in the correct continent then but it, it mm -hmm. places the vocabulary as being a little bit odd um yeah and then kirtland's warbler of all things why how in the world did the, how are they selecting these species that's crazy i don't know yeah there, there's there's people who are actual birders who don't even know what a kirtland's warbler is i almost wonder if an actual birder got into the writing staff and did that to mess with us because if you actually had the the knowledge to grab the audio of the red-bellied woodpecker and then throw it in and then call it red-bellied sapsucker and then you're clearly in like a downtown area and then you look out and you see a kirtland kirtland's warbler i think that has to be an actual birder messing with us in the writing staff i feel like i would do something like that if i was writing for a tv show you know yeah i mean it could either be that or it's like they they just started googling things in the first like they googled like bird articles or something and whatever the first stuff that came up um made it right into the script kirtland's world are above my head by the way right there oh yeah incidentally um so first of all they would never see a kirtland's world or wherever whatever city in the eastern u.s this was in that would be an incredibly incredibly rare bird but the red-bellied woodpecker would be really common there um you're right and then, and I also found it really hilarious, the guy's response about him. He doesn't necessarily think she's dorky or that she, you know, can't be his friend anymore because of this, this uh, thing that she's let on to, but he doesn't, he just doesn't not know how to make sense of it. You know, he's like asking questions. He's trying to understand it, but he, he's, he's like, you know, throwing spaghetti at the wall and not much is sticking. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Yeah, and I think her explanation, I feel like a lot of times people use birding in, in TV to try to show something about the character, you know what I mean? And usually I feel like it's not always a good thing. It's like, it's like a cold and it's like a cold and like cunning um, attention to detail. You know what I mean? I yeah. like that's often, often what it sort of belies. We're almost OCD-ish or, you know, or we can be anyway. And I think the pub, that definitely can be the way that the public perceives us sometimes too. So I, th I thought they really captured the uh, dichotomy there between non-birders who, who are, doesn't really know what it's about, but are trying to get it, and then a birder trying to explain it to the to the person too. Yeah, we, we truly have had a lot of conversations where people are talking to us like that guy is talking to her like, so you, you go out and you just look at them, huh? And it's like, well, it doesn't feel like we're just looking at them when we're doing it. It's like, a, yeah. that's like a quest, an adventure, a, a, a passion, you know? Yeah, they're like, they're like, so you get, you, you know, what do you get money? Do you like win something? Do you do you win a kind like they're trying to understand like what would possibly motivate you to just go out and try to like build a list or, or, or even when you're not listing and you're just trying to like look at them. And then, you know, the, the concept of just like, yeah, we were just looking and enjoying. That's all. It yeah. seems kind of foreign to people. But, you know, generally, once you get those folks really to understand what it's like and to actually try it with you, I think then most of them think it's pretty interesting is in my experience. Yeah, yeah oh. absolutely. Well, good stuff, well, man. That, that was fun. Yeah, dude. I'm glad we could jump on and do this really quick. It's uh it's always fun to see what the what the public thinks about us 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 hardcore birders, you know? Absolutely. So why why don't you all put in the uh comments your thoughts about the clips in here and our reaction to it and also any ideas you have for future content related to this. Please like, share, and subscribe all of our content, and we look forward to seeing you on the next one. Peace. Peace.